What's up everybody? It's your girl Aisha and I'm back with another video. If it's your first time joining my channel, welcome. And if you've been rocking with me, welcome back. So guys, I'm super excited to share with you all how I achieved my 800 credit score. Um, this video is going to entail some credit information, how you can build your own credit, and then just a little formula that I put together that I've noticed will be very helpful to you, whether your credit score is 476 or you're at 720 and you're just trying to go even higher into that excellent bracket. So if you are interested in this video, I suggest that you keep watching and without further ado, let's get right into it. Okay, so just to give you guys a little bit of a background on when I started establishing my credit, I was 17 years old. That's when I got my very first credit card going into college and it's the only credit card that I still have until this day. I've never opened up another one um, there's no specific like reasoning or anything behind that but growing up in my younger years my mom's like you know use your college credit card put gas on it pay it off um, um, go get your nails done or something pay it off just so that I can start building my credit so if you are um, a part of my younger audience that is what I would absolutely recommend as a starting out to establishing your credit is to get a college credit card but I just want to go ahead and give you guys some different tips and things that I have learned going on through my own personal experience and things that I've researched that will help anybody boost their credit score despite the state that you are currently at and just know that all hope is not lost. It doesn't matter what your credit score is, all hope is not lost. So some of the primary factors that will help you boost your credit score. First is your credit utilization. How much of your available credit are you actually using? What's that percentage look like for you? If you have 50, a $50,000 credit limit, are you closer? Are you over that, that, that threshold? Because what I would recommend and th some things that I've learned to be a proven fact to be actually very helpful is staying within that zero to nine percent range um that's just like a go-to so just just as another example say for instance you had a fifty thousand dollar um credit limit the max that you should be trying to utilize out of that amount is ten thousand dollars and that that is the maximum like that is the absolute maximum so just try to stay like as close as close to not using any of that money as possible because you have to remember that it's not yours um and the lower amount that you've used out of your credit limit reflects positively on you so the second factor in boosting your credit would be your payment history now this can be anything from your auto loans to your rent to your insurance like whatever bills that you have whatever obligations that you have whoever you're in debt to if it's the hardest thing for you to remember to pay your bills on time put your bills on auto pay to save you the headache to save you the the memory loss like all of those type of things because it's so easy for us to get caught up in our day-to-day -day lives and oh i forgot to pay my bill or whatever the case may be and what you don't want to run the risk of is your lien holders or your property management whoever like whoever you owe debts to whoever you pay your bills to you don't want to run the risk of your stuff going into collections just from negligence on your part so that's one thing that i've always done that that helps me out like the only thing that i do not have on auto pay um, I don't put my rent on auto pay and that's just because I just feel like the one time that I do that like God forbid like I don't know something happens and I'm in a position where I have to move some money around because y'all honestly we've all been there before like that's something that I will never forget to pay um, manually just because uh, it's the first of the month and that's that's my largest bill so I will never forget to pay it but yes auto pay will just save you like some of that headache and your payment history should be at a hundred percent like sometimes you know it's not feasible or whatever the case may be but try to prioritize and set yourself up like month to month whether you need to budget out whether you need to plan it out like 
all of your payments need to be submitted on time or early um the third factor the third factor that will really really boost your credit score is your derogatory marks now you shouldn't have any but sometimes it's unavoidable and um a lot of the times we're not even aware of it if we have derogatory marks um so often we tend to shy away from checking our credit score because we don't want it to decrease our credit score or we don't want those points to come off from us checking it but just going on annualcreditreport.com um no more than twice a year like no more than twice a year but just to see because sometimes there's errors on your report that you weren't even aware of and that could be impacting your score and then there's some things that have been on there for so long that you can actually put in a request to have those derogatory marks removed um, a lot of people are unaware of that option, but it's a thing. You can actually put in a request, and if it's been on there, if it's been on your credit report for, I don't know, sometimes it's like three years. But just as an example, if it's been on there for X number amount of years, you can request to have it removed, and that will instantly boost your credit score, and you'll see that reflected the next time your credit report, um, the next time your credit score updates another factor your credit history so if you are like me and you are still young which i am i do not have nine years of credit history but ideally that is where you want to get to especially when you get into the business of looking for a home um just really big really big expenses like showing that you have so much credit history and then you've done so well over like across that duration really works in your favor when you're looking to take out those larger loans and mortgages and whatever else you choose to do with your money that can truly truly help you um a lot of people also so this is just like a little thing that i came across that i was unaware of a lot of people are shooting themselves in the foot when it comes to co-signing with people for auto loans for to put their name on a, an apartment lease co-signing like if you can help it please don't do it like i don't recommend co-signing with someone but actually becoming an authorized user on someone's account so for example say i'm an authorized user and we put in a request to our creditor for somebody to essentially become an authorized user on my account they're going to adopt my credit history so you know i'm booming i'm up here i have an 800 plus da, 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 and they're coming along at like a five six hundred my positive credit history and how i like have things going they're going to adopt my credit history essentially boosting their own credit score and the benefit to being an authorized user as opposed to a co-signer is an authorized user can be removed at any time while a co-signer cannot so and another and another downside to being a co-signer is say for instance we decided to co-sign and you're not paying your bills and this and that you're doing all of these different things for your credit score to essentially drop that impacts the both of us as opposed to whether i'm an authorized user or you're an authorized user if i'm winning you're winning if i'm winning you're winning if i'm not doing so hot you're still okay and that's the benefit of being an authorized user. But see, a lot of people are more familiar. I feel like um, co-signers get more exposure than authorized users. But it's ultimately like a piggybacking method. Like the piggybacking method, if you guys decide you want to look it up, you can. Um, yeah, authorized users and piggybacking, it, it, it goes hand in hand. And that positive impact on your credit score, you're going to notice it the next go around so usually financial institutions report um you know your new credit score every 30 to 45 days so these factors can essentially like boost your credit score and then i've come up with four different r's i've come up with four different r's that will kind of you know if you really plug it in your mind and apply it i'm sure i'm sure that it will help you so the first r would be to reduce your utilization the second r would be to remove any derogatory marks the third r would be to raise your credit limit now i'm not saying do that all the time hey can i raise my credit limit can i raise my credit limit can i raise my credit limit just so that you can get by on spending more because that's not what you need to be doing anyhow but raising it just occasionally if your bank hasn't already done it for you because with me um i have wells fargo and they would raise my credit limit 
um, themselves. Like they will raise my credit limit themselves. But if you're raising that credit limit and you're still staying as close to, you know, as close as 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 within that zero to nine percent range, you're doing well for yourself. Like you're doing well for for yourself because ultimately it's going to appear that you're spending way less just because you raised your credit limit. Um, and the fourth part would be to repeat the cycle. Do those three steps and then repeat the cycle. So again, you are going to reduce your utilization, remove any derogatory marks, raise your credit limit, and repeat the cycle. So I hope that this video has helped you in one way or another. Um, yeah, like I'm so I'm so happy. Like I think it was probably three weeks ago that I no longer have any credit card debt. I have zero credit card debt. I got student loan debt, but I have zero credit card debt. And I was just like, man, like, man, oh man. But I hope these factors helped you. I hope you learned something. And yeah, like all hope is not lost. And I have a final thing. I want you guys to get this book. It is by Susie Orman. It's called The Money Book. I was recommended this book in college by one of my professors. And there's so much stuff in here. Like, I still haven't read this book in its entirety. But there's so many helpful nuggets and tips and Q&As and just educational factors that will help you boost your finances as well as your credit. So chapter three of this book is a whole chapter, a whole chapter of an actual professional, like, giving you nuggets and wisdom on different things and providing different scenarios as to how you can build your credit and repair your credit. So I definitely encourage this book. It's about $11 on Amazon. I'm going to actually include the link to it in my description box. And that is all I have for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you for supporting whatever it is that I choose to do with my channel. And if you're new here, you chose a good day to find me. But as always, I love you guys so much and don't forget to like comment and subscribe to my youtube channel and i will see you guys in my next video